coach. This is that, and it should be a big day for his team. Pretty good coach on the other side with Clay Hendricks that we'll get to. Catamounts will get the ball first. The ball is under th on the tee. All the talk over and time for a top 10 matchup. And Cole Gonzalez in this Western Carolina offense will get first cracks at it. A lot talked about the offense all week on both sides. But these defenses are going to have something to say about this football game. And for Furman, it starts up front trying to stop number nine in purple and Cole Gonzalez. Well, they're going to have their hands full with the offensive lines. You could talk about skill players, playmakers, and yes, they abound on both sides. But Kyle, these may be the two best offensive lines in the conference. Whoever wins the battle in the trenches today is going to be in the best spot when the dust settles on this one. Gonzalez has the catamount, catamounts ready to roll from the 25-yard line. As man in motion early. And it's an early screen game past the outside. Caught and four, five yards. A nice little pick and catch to one of his favorite targets in David White Jr. Well, good start for Western Carolina. Just kind of want to get your sea leagues underneath you. You know how explosive this team can be. You know, you got a quarterback that threw five touchdown passes and a half <laughs> and a running back that scored five touchdowns on the ground and a half. You know how quickly things can roll up, but you just want to kind of establish things in front of this capacity crowd today. Reed is in the backfield with Gonzalez as he's out of the gun on second and five. They'll fake it to Reed, back to White again. Two targets, two catches, and an early first down. White, who had 15 catches, averaging well over 40 yards a game and an instant impact here in this one. Well, and an early indication to Furman that they're going to have to locate David White throughout, right? The senior already targeted a couple of times right out of the gate as the chains are already moved for Western Carolina. An opening first down, White. Again, the man in motion for Gonzalez. They'll throw it that way again, but there's the pressure for Furman. We talked about it all week, heard about it all week. Now a flag down in the backfield as well, but that is how quickly they can get to the passer. Can the Paladins will check the marker. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 93. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. While they walk that off, Kyle, let's underscore the battle that will take place in the trenches today. You mentioned the outstanding defensive front for Furman and what they've been able to do against opponents across the course of the year. But these two incredible offensive lines come in with all kind of accolades. You'll see the penalty assessed here in the incomplete pass as they try to target White for a third time. But the battle in the trenches, if you love line play, this is your day between these two top ten foes. Well, perhaps two of the better offensive lines, not only in the Southern Conference is another pitch and catch outside, but perhaps two of the better offensive lines in FCS football playing here as Lee gets his first catch, another in quick out, and they're not letting the pass rush get there. A lot of quick passes early on for the Catamounts. Yeah, big question, how much time can they make for Cole Gonzalez? Another thing you do to make time for Cole Gonzalez is do those quick hit passes, which is what is part of Western Carolina's game plan, obviously right out of the gate here. White again in motion. They fake it to Reed. This time they take their shot. They have him, but misfired. They were looking for White again, who got behind that Paladin secondary. Steady diet of David White in this first drive for Western Carolina, and that was drawn up beautifully. It was there, Kyle. You said it, just a little bit too much air underneath, that this was six for Western if there's just a little less on the pass. And see there, White trying to track it down. That's into the direction the wind has gone throughout the morning hours, and now a spot on the field here, third and three. You wonder, perhaps, do they take two cracks at it if they don't pick up the first? And you got a crowd ready to erupt. You heard them ooh and ah on that almost touchdown. Reed comes in the backfield with Gonzalez. Quick pitch and catch, and that play seemed out of sorts from the beginning. <laughs> Gonzalez palms the sky, and it'll bring up fourth down. Decision time on the opening drive for the home team. We'll talk about the, the crowd here. They're hanging on the edge of their seats to see what happens and what kind of message Western Carolina will attempt to send on this first drive of the game. I think it is being received clearly right now as they line up for fourth down. They plan to go. Furman head coach Clay Hendricks looks on, looking for his defense to make a stop. Three receivers all to Gonzalez's right. He drops back on fourth down, has time, fires behind his intended target, and the ball will go to the Paladins. 
And so the Catamounts move the ball, but get stymied around near midfield. And now Dominic Roberto will lead this Furman Paladin offense out. And there's plenty to be had there as well in terms of playmakers and a good offensive line of their own. Yeah, well, and, and again, nobody more so than Dominic Roberto. Sometimes you come into a game like this and you wonder, all right, who do you highlight offensively? Not the case with the way he has performed the last two times these teams have played. The numbers are phenomenal. Tyler Huff, a big part of last year's meeting, even though he didn't throw it that much because of Roberto's success. He was 7 of 10, 7 of those completions. Three of them went for touchdowns off the play-action game. He's certainly a threat to run it as well, something we'll keep tabs on as Tyler Huff lines up the Paladin offense for their first crack at it in really good field position to start their opening drive of the day. One of the things you have to handle is the environment. I mean, this yep. is a lot of purple here today on both sides, <laughs> of course, but Western Carolina with their largest crowd of the year. I mean, this is the first time top 10 teams have ever met in this facility. You try to find a comparable game, you've got to go to the early 90s, and if you really want a comparable game, it's the playoff game in the early 80s in route to the national championship environment. So this is a unique environment because of all that is on the line here today. And don't think for a moment it's not in the minds of these players and it's something the Furman quarterback will certainly have to handle with excellence on this day. Tyler Huff has a man in motion for their first series. Roberto gets a carry right away. There's not much room, but as he does so often, pushes the pile forward for a couple out to the 45-yard line. We expect a heavy dose of Roberto. We expect the Catamounts to swarm that way. And early on, you see the physical nature with how he runs the football. Well, and so much of it for that offensive line. We'll see how much space they can make for him today. But yeah, this is one of those days where there are no questions about what the real battle will be. It's limiting the impact of Roberto. Dropping back to throw is Huff. Now he wants to run, fires, and airmails an intended target. And so now it sets up third and long, a place neither one of these offenses prefer, but both with quarterbacks to do it. Huff certainly one of them. Airmailed one of his reliable targets there in Luke Shiflett. And Coach Hendricks talked about Shiflett this week, and he said, it seems like any time we need a catch, you throw it up to him, and 12 finds a way to bring it in. That one too tall for him. We'll see if they look for him here on third and seven. Straight back is Huff. Flushed out of the pocket. Pressure's on. Huff with a stiff arm. He takes off, and he dances for a first down. It's a dual threat ability that makes the difference for Huff here. Both our quarterbacks in the early going, maybe less than crisp on the delivery of the football, and the environment somewhat, no doubt, plays into that. But here's the extra weapon that Huff brings to the table. When it's not there downfield, he's able to tuck it and get just enough to keep the drive alive. You see, you bring the quarterback spy to try to man the quarterback. Carson Jones tasked with it that time, and not any ordinary quarterback trying to get to the turf. He picks up a first down as Roberto gets the carry, and there is nothing doing up the middle into that Catamount defensive front. Chris Morgan, one of the first to meet him. Yeah, we talk so much about line play, and rightfully so, when the talent is there that you're seeing on this day. But for as much discussion as we have about the offensive line of Western Carolina holding off the Furman charge, it's just as critical that the Catamounts get some push up front against this Furman offensive line. They were able to do so and plug the holes there to limit Roberto. Oh, it sets up second nine. Roberto again, this time slips through. There's some room and nearly broke out of that shoelace tackle. But there you see Roberto again moving the sticks. A wag of the finger says that's more like what he's used to seeing from that Furman front. Well, and just when you think you have the grad student out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, hemmed up a bit, he reminds you that uh, it's not just the explosive speed that he brings to the table, but he's going to continue to keep those legs churning, and it means another first down. Out to the 35 now. Long exchange here. Roberto again thundering his way inside the 30. <laughs> And so if you're firm, this drive about as good as you could have scripted. A big third down conversion after you got good field position because your defense made a stop. And now marching it downfield, Roberto's starting to get the run game going as he'll check out here on second and short. After turning Western Carolina over on the fourth down try in Furman territory and now trying to take the crowd of it with an impactful opening drive of their own. Things going according to script for Furman very early here. Well, you watch them, this matchup the last two years, 
the early starts have belonged to the Paladins each of the last two seasons. As Huff's got it on the quarterback keeper, and he's got another first down with his legs, and that an early theme for the Paladin offense. Well, and you referenced that game last year. You think about the, the five-yard line. It came down to the five-yard line, right? Western yep. Carolina going in after battling back in the fourth quarter, rolling up 20 quick ones to make it very interesting down the stretch. What they don't want to do is find themselves in that type of hole early. Furman attempting to, again, rip a page out of last season's playbook here again. Straight drop this time for Huff. He takes his shot down the middle, and a really nice play made defensively at the last moment. It was open up the seam, but defensively, the Catamounts were ready. Lee Campbell with an imperative deflection. And that's a redshirt freshman, and on this occasion, it's just tremendous coverage. The ball thrown about where you would want it to be, but nicely handled by Campbell. And it's that Western Carolina secondary. Keep in mind, you know, when you're giving up 50 points a game at times, you know, the secondary has been touched <laughs> up from time to time, but they show their ability, their development, and their growth. That's a nice play back there. Counter for Roberto. Roberto with room to rumble. And he's close to, if not has, another first down. And the big part, that's Wayne Anderson who got the touch that time, looking like Roberto with the physicality of the run. Well, you will. With the offensive line making the kind of holes we're seeing from them already on this drive, the back sometimes a little irrelevant. Not that Roberto's <laughs> not a special back, he is. But you see, no matter who Furman puts back there in these moments, plenty of space being made, and here they are knocking on the doorstep, these Paladins. They'll hand it up the middle again and tripped up early this time. Not much there. The Catamount defense wins this exchange as Mayan Hicks had little room to operate. And, you know, Kyle, we expect to see points today. I mean, 52-50 the last time out, that may be visions of things to come when you talk about that shootout with Chattanooga, particularly with the way both of these teams can score today. So a key stop here, a key stop there along the way with two offenses that expect to put up some pretty monster numbers going to be critical, particularly in the red zone. And here's a first chance to do so for Western Carolina. Both coaches talk to us as well. Touchdowns, not field goals when they get down here. Great point. Huff, flip pass wide open, and the first touchdown on the board as easy of a touchdown toss as Tyler Huff will have all year long. Well, and that's because of the way they sold the fake. Watch the Western Carolina defense bite on the fake. It's because Furman had been so effective rushing the football to this juncture, and they do have wide open purple to drop it into for the first points of the game. Mason Pline had all kinds of room to take his time, make the catch, and the Paladins on the board first. Now they'll try to add the point after where they have been perfect this year. And, well, we might have gotten them there. Is this one doinks off the upright, no good, and perhaps We'll have to see how big that could loom later on in the game. Well, and there is a flag down, and that's going to determine whether or not this becomes a special teams factor as they sort the flag out here in just a moment. So they, it's a penalty down. We'll get the word from our head referee. Offside, defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Half the distance to the goal. Replay try. And that's going to be against Western Carolina. It will give Furman a chance to set back up, go for it a second time, or if they choose to roll the dice here, try to maximize their points in the early stages of this contest. But you're right, Kyle, that had the potential to be a big miss. But with Western Carolina offsides, uh, another chance coming for Furman here. Well, you see Tyler Huff out there. Looks like he's going to stay. He raced out there maybe before Coach Clay Hendricks could keep him from going out there and said, you know what, we're on the one-yard line. Let's trust this offensive front to get us in. He's in the backfield by himself at the moment. As Furman will try to cash in on the penalty and go for two. Huff fires, broken up, incomplete. And a big statement perhaps by the Catamount defense. Andreas Keaton knocks it away. Furman finds the first score. It's 6-0 early on here in the first quarter in Culloway. back one of the better scenes you will see or backdrops you'll see in all the college football here in Cullowee but it's the visiting Paladins with the initial strike but maybe some momentum on the two-point try after the offsides penalty so now we'll have to see as Western Carolina moved the ball on their first drive but stalled right around the 40-yard line and you see him talking with that return group now trying to get good field position for drive number two and first step toward an extension of the streak for the Furman Paladins. Remember, they're coming in trying to make it double digits yep. in terms of key victories 
Uh, FCS wise, this is a Furman team that lost just the one game a year ago. A little bit of controversy involved as well in that contest against Sanford that would ultimately win the conference championship. So this is a Furman team that was on the verge a year ago, really wanting to send a message on the road in this one today and a good start for the visitors. But Western has to be cognizant of the fact, Kyle, that you were a little more touch on the football away yep. from a touchdown of your own in that opening drive. So plenty to build on for the Catamounts. And A.J. Colombo, who some of the people within the Catamount program call him Mr. Excitement. He won't get a chance here as this one is kicked out of bounds through the back of the end zone and will go for a touchback. So Cole Gonzalez and company out for drive number two, perhaps most notably in the opening drive, no touches for Desmond Still Reed. Still awaiting the arrival of Desmond <laughs> Reed. You read my mind. We saw several opportunities for David White Jr., but we did not see that first rush from Desmond Reed. His status, not only his ability to be out there and play today, but how much does he have to bring to the table? You know, what percentage is he? That's going to be key because that's going to make life a lot easier for Cole Gonzalez if he's in the groove. How about two sophomores leading the way for this offense from Western Carolina? As Gonzalez in the backfield with Reed here, you saw – his bio there, here is the first touch from Reed, and there he goes right up the middle, a counter run, and that is what the fans here in Cullowee have been all too accustomed to seeing, one in purple with a good run. So they take a deep breath and say, first of all, okay, he is good to go. <laughs> and then second of all, Western Carolina fans now say, all right, there's a big time first down gain. They would like to see more of that all day long because he'll try to match snap for snap, touch for touch, Roberto, in what could be a great game within the game throughout the afternoon. Sets up second and short with the Catamount offense. Furman shows pressure and looks like a broken down play. Gonzalez is just going to have to eat it as he's hit from behind and brought to the turf. Furman came in in a hurry. And for a team that has only allowed two sacks all year, Furman's got one here in the first quarter. There's the Furman front and the grad student, Cook, who's able to work his way into the backfield and negate almost to the entirety of the first run by Reed. So now we saw Furman on their scoring drive convert a good third and long. Gonzalez will try to do the same here, third and we'll call it nine. Just over seven to play here in quarter number one. Gonzalez with time. Now running out of it, fires over the middle. There's Desmond Reed. Reed with room to operate across midfield and into Paladin territory all the way down to the 36 yard line. More than one way to get the football <laughs> into the hands of Desmond Reed. And if you had questions about his ability to run in open space on this day, they were just answered on the second drive of the game for Western. How about being a linebacker trying to cover that guy one-on-one? -on -one? A tough task, no doubt. This time, no room up the middle. Maybe got inside the 35, nothing there. Reed will check out, and Branson Adams will come in. First time we've seen him as Reed's made his presence felt here in this first quarter. Adams, meanwhile, had a good second half against Chattanooga after Reed's absence. And we talked to Kerwin Bell this week. He feels plenty comfortable with 22 running the football. Yeah, he said this is going to give us some options today. You also saw the little wrinkle in play calling a moment ago, which gives options to Western Carolina. And here they are knocking on the door to try to equalize or perhaps take the lead here. They fake the handoff, throw a little high. And in the traffic, good coverage there by the Paladins. And now a Catamount slow to get up. That's Sincere Lee out there. And that would be a big blow to the Catamount receiving core as the athletic training staff will quickly go and attend to him. And you see Cole Gonzalez, sophomore quarterback, a different environment than anything he's ever experienced. And that one looks like it might have gotten tipped by that line as well for Furman. And a, a tough place to settle into. And that throw a little high. Well, white jersey's uh, inside the house, right? As yeah. he's trying to work his way <laughs> to some open spaces in the pocket right now. And you can already see the impact of that Furman defensive front. Just in the little bit of the split second, it's requiring Gonzalez to get rid of the football before he would like. And you know, the best thing we've seen so far all day, up and, and moving around no worse for the wear, is the Catamount training staff 
will not be needed to assist the wide receiver, and that's a good sign. But, you know, just that split second makes all the difference in putting a little bit too much air underneath the football that we saw in the first drive, in releasing this and a little bit too much on the pass or a little too tall on the pass this go-round. So if that offensive line can find a way to somehow limit the penetration that Furman's getting early, it's going to go a long way to calming down the young QB. And now he's going to be tasked with another third and long, third and eight this time. But in Paladin territory. Gonzalez will drop back, flushed again, fires, and missed his man on the outside. Again, the firm and pressure moved him off his spot. This throw wide intended for Calvin Jones and another fourth down decision for Kerwin Bell and company. Well, and there's enough separation there for Jones that he was going to be able to bring that in near the sticks and with a good turn, perhaps pick up the first down. But uh, you said it, Kyle. It goes back to the point we were just discussing. Can they find a way to make Gonzalez just a bit more comfortable in the pocket? That really right now has been the difference in the football game on each offensive snap for Western Carolina. Well, Green on the sideline here on fourth down, talking with some of the athletic training staff. Catamounts will go again. As Gonzalez drops back, has time, hesitates, fires, and nearly intercepted. But it's knocked away, and for the second time this afternoon, the Furman defense holds on fourth down. Well, and he may have had Colombo in behind the defense there, but not to be. Nice job by Furman's D to get things rolling. Defense again holds on fourth down. Here was another look at that last shot from Gonzalez. And you look at the overall scheme of things, the Paladin defensive line, while they only might have one sack, they've affected the play of Gonzalez through the first two drives. They really have. You know what Gonzalez can be when he settles in. Catamount fans have seen that across the course of the year. But right now, it really is the disruption of that defensive front from Furman that has left a couple of passes that have been there. You have to love the play calling from Western yeah. Carolina so far because the opportunities have been created by this staff. It's just a matter of getting the young quarterback settled, it would seem right now, for things to begin to open up. But what you have to do defensively is keep Furman from trying to slip away from you a bit with the one-score lead already in effect. And Huff, a veter veteran quarterback, hands to a veteran running back in Roberto, who stumbles ahead for three, maybe four. And that's really what sort of seemed to turn that drive. It was the third down scramble from Huff that really got their last drive going. Then Roberto got going on the ground. And they marched all the way to the end zone on their last drive. A good gain on first down. Huff will pull this one. Fires over the middle. Pitch, catch, and perhaps some more afterwards. And into Catamount territory goes the Paladin offense. And another pitch and catch on the move. Ben Ferguson found a spot in the zone that time. Well, you can key so much on Roberto, but Furman's balanced offense, really what has made this Paladins team so highly regarded coming into the year. You see how effectively the toss and catch is, and I go back to your point, Kyle, the tuck and run for Huff was a difference maker in extending the previous drive that resulted in the score. Now hand it, Roberto again, right side with room, lowers the shoulder. And picks up a couple more. Might have lost the towel on the back end, but, hey, he's got nine yards and second short. Well, the reaction of the Western Carolina defenders that found him elusive tell you everything you need to know. Rarely does first contact take care of business against Roberto. And why do we talk so much about Roberto? 252 yards, three touchdowns, a career high the last time these two teams met in that 47-40 victory. So he seems to fare well against the purple in the purple of his own. Pressure comes here, line holds, fires over the middle. It's caught more big explosive plays. It's Mason Pline, the tight end, who had time to fire, did Huff, and he didn't miss his tight end over the middle for a big gain, and back into the red zone go the Paladins. What you notice about Furman, too, how many times do we say it? This grad student, that grad student, yeah. here's another grad <laughs> student. This is a very experienced Furman team, and you can see the rhythm having been developed between the quarterback and the tight end across the course of the year. Timely play call, and here are the Paladins knocking on the door once more. In the red zone for the second time in as many drives here in the first quarter. Play fake again, Huff has to fire and has got his man streaking across the end zone for a touchdown. 
Huff two for two in the red zone on touchdown tosses, and the Paladins lead by two scores early. Able to isolate the receiver, and Huff, talk about showing off your arm strength. He's on the move and is able to deliver this on the money for a second touchdown for Furman. Just calm, collected, and that was uh, as good as you're going to see from a well-drawn-up standpoint. We've seen a couple touchdown catches now. It's the extra point this time up and good. Pretty easy catches if you're a receiver. Hey, run the route, and Huff will put it on you. The Paladins, home crowd waiting for a moment to erupt as they've been on the edge of their seats all game so far, but so far it's the Paladins making the early statement. Two fourth down stops and two touchdowns on the board for the visitors, and this is a Furman team. We mentioned experience, but quick starts have been some of their ammo. And uh, on the flip side, you know this is a Western Carolina solid at battling from behind. The comeback cat's going to have to make their presence known again here. You know, this is a team, they started a little slower last couple of years, yep. finished the year incredibly strong. They did so in a number of football games in much the same <laughs> way. They started the year so solidly this year that they find themselves right in the heart of the Southern Conference Championship hunt, but this was a team that trailed Furman 44-20 a year ago before making it a one-score game. No reason to believe you won't see plenty of fight from Western Carolina from here forward. When you look in the second half of this game, last time it was here two years ago, Catamounts were down 11 in the third quarter, came back to win that football game. So it has been a story between these two where Furman jumps out early, and then a question of can they hang on? We'll see what counterpunch Cole Gonzalez and company have to get the sense, maybe it's a big throw or two that could really get him going. And the opportunities, again, will go back to it and underscore it. They've been there. One thing different from the last time they met here, really the last couple of times they met here, what you're seeing in these pictures. <laughs> Beautiful day. I mean, you think about the two driving rainstorms they played in the last two times in Cullowee. This is order it up weather and the fans enjoying what is a great start to the football game just from a, a visibility standpoint and everything else surrounding it. Play fake over the middle. It's Lee who makes a contested catch and squirts away for more. Across the 40-yard line, we said it might take a throw or two. That one had to be perfect, and boy, was it ever. Well, and sometimes you need a spark provided by one of your receivers if you put it in the general area. That is right on the money, and then it's the yards after the catch that begin to get this fan base into it, and that is the story. It's a beautiful day, a large crowd. You need to utilize them, and Western Carolina will attempt to go on the march to that end. So a solid pickup on first down. Gonzalez flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to run. He's tucking it and getting close to midfield with a pickup of five or six. And sometimes, too, for these quarterbacks, Jason, it takes a time getting hit a time or two. Maybe you tuck it and run and get in the flow of the football game. Well, we've seen how much uh, more crisp Huff has been after he tucked it and picked up the first down earlier. This, uh, the hard knock, as you said, of Gonzalez to the ground after he picks up a positive gain may very well serve to help settle the young man down. Second and five, handoff up the middle. That's Adams who plunges into Paladin territory a couple yards shy of a first down. We asked Coach Kerwin Bell about Adams, and he said, you know, this is a kid that started as a walk-on, as uh, more than one Catamount player on this offense has, but hasn't had the reps, but every time he's been called upon, He's been ready. Gonzalez keeps it here and moves the chains on the quarterback keeper. You're starting to see that confidence just in the body language of Gonzalez, right? You know the ability's there. You know the talent level is there. But you're beginning to see a bit of confidence now. Maybe there's something to the comfort level of clawing from behind, something Western Carolina is trying to do here. But a good start to this drive. They look at they did it at Eastern Kentucky. They had to do it late against Chattanooga and nearly a game-changing type play made. It's Jack Burton who nearly flipped the drive on its ear from his defensive end spot. Yeah, more disruption from that front from Furman, and this was set up beautifully. Branson Adams was in the open field. Had they been able to deliver it to him in the flat, looked like it was going to be major positive yardage for Western Carolina, but once more, the Furman push up front making the difference. You see Burton sort of looking around after saying, man, if I had caught that one, what it might have been. <laughs> Sets up second down and 10 for Gonzalez and the Catamount offense. This is the portion of the field they have stalled the first two drives. They'll hand it up to Adams here. He'll pick up five or six. 
Western Carolina fans want a flag on top of it. There is none. Third and five forthcoming. I go back to your point, Kyle. You think about what it takes these days to work your way up from one of those players, not really preeminent on the depth chart, not really a part of the conversation when you arrive on campus, but to work your way into a supporting and then a feature role the way Adams has. It just speaks to the work ethic, not only the talent and ability that you know is there, but the work ethic and the approach of this young man. Key moments, he's stepping up for Western Carolina right now. Keep in mind here on a third and medium, he was actually recruited to play wide receiver was Adams and then moved to that running back spot. He gets the call on third down and moves the sticks. A first down for Adams. And the guy that started his receiver and, and Kerwin Bell's offense, if you're athletic running the football, he said, hang on, no, 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 we'll move you to running back and get you the ball more often as he picks up the third down. Understands his personnel and how to utilize them as good as anybody you're going to run across in the Southern Conference, and it's on display here. Gonzalez flips it off his back foot. Another pass a little too tall. And a flag down in the backfield. We'll see which way this one goes with five seconds remaining in the opening quarter. And one more point about Adams while they sort this flag out. He becomes critical in another aspect as we listen to the call. Holding. Offense, number 52, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. He becomes critical in another aspect today as well, Kyle, because Desmond Reed, while he looks to be okay, you don't want to overtax him as he attempts to return today. So as much as can be provided by that surrounding cast to make sure you can use him for those key moments along the way, it becomes a big part of the attack, a big part of the game plan for Western Carolina. So Furman accepts the penalty, and it'll march it back to the 43, now first and 20. Can you believe the first quarter is almost past us by? Oh, I know. And now more whistles before a further snap, and the officials, I think they're trying to check the down right here. Our head referee said it was second down, but the down marker still said first down. And I think they've got it all sorted out. As Gonzalez and company set up shop on first and long. Adams, the man in motion. Trips to the top side. Gonzalez steps, fires, has his man over the middle. And now White trying to do something with it. He'll get out to the 30-yard line. So gets the penalty yardage back and then some. And that will bring an exciting first quarter to an end. Both offenses have had opportunity, but so far Furman has found the scoreboard twice through one quarter of play, a top 10 showdown that has featured all you thought it might. As Western Carolina got off to the early start, two big fourth down stops for Furman, and Tyler Huff led the way from there with a big third down run that sparked their first drive, and Furman with a two score lead after one. So some of the pictures, including Tyler Huff, who was a factor through the air in that first quarter. As we get set for quarter number two, the Catamounts on the march trying to respond to one of those two touchdown drives. And it's second and medium after a big play on first down and another one coming here, perhaps. Adams tries to turn the corner and does for a first down. Adams picking up right where he left off in the first quarter. You no, know, Kyle, you think about it, the numbers kind of reflective of how much more evenly this game has been played perhaps than what the scoreboard reveals. 124 yards to 115, the split in total yards between these two teams, even if Furman leads by the right. two scores. So that speaks to the opportunities that have been there for Western Carolina. And uh, the big storyline, look at the bright sunshine <laughs> on this 67-degree day, perfect environment, Blue Ridge Mountains with fall colors surrounding this. It's everything you'd want on a Southern Conference Saturday. Gonzalez, straight drop, pressure comes off his back foot. Pass was deflected, I believe. And it'll set up second down. As they look for Adams there, it looks like some confusion after the play, but nothing either way, and it's second and 10. But, but for these teams to be separated by less than 10 yards, yeah. when you talk about offensive movement, 
it is a little deceptive on the scoreboard. Western in position early second quarter to make it a one-score game again if they can close this drive. Two fourth down stops, a big part of that for this Paladin defense. Hand off left side, room to scamper there for Adams who dodges and weaves his way inside the 15-yard line and sets up third and manageable. So the Catamounts have gone to the run game more of late, but it's Adams more so than Reed as we haven't seen Reed since that big third down catch late in the first quarter. Yeah, five carries already for Adams. Reed with just the two touches thus far, but now they were of consequence. The first yep. uh, big time gain, and then of course Cole Gonzalez tucking it a couple of times himself. That's how the ground game has, has shaken out thus far for the home team. Gonzalez, straight drop, looks left. Now he's gonna run, makes a man miss, lunges forward, and has a first down. It'll be first and goal, Western Carolina. Can't tell you looking down the sidelines, Jason. Desmond Reed on a crutch with a ball cap, not a good sign of your Western Carolina, but Adams may be tasked with carrying the majority of the load the rest of the way. Beginning to look that way, and somewhat surprising after what we saw from Reed on the couple of carries, particularly the reception that doesn't really fall into the, the rushing numbers where he made the catch and it was explosive after. So last thing Catamount fans want to see right now and certainly a game changer. Gonzalez fires this one on the money. It's Colombo who'll strut into the end zone for six. That's the first thing Catamount fans want to see right now. <laughs> How about the answer for Furman to start the second, or for Western Carolina of the Furman start here at the beginning stages of the second quarter and this is well executed by Western Carolina. What did we talk about with Coach Kerwin Bell leading up to this game? It's not necessarily how many catches for Colombo, but when they happen, they missed him earlier. They didn't miss him there as he's in for the first score for Western Carolina and can make it a six-point game with a lot of time still to go here in this second quarter. McCollum knocks it through, and Western Carolina finds themselves on the board, much to the light of Kerwin Bell in his home. So Cole Gonzalez finds his offense in a groove and finally puts them on the board, their third drive in. A touchdown strike to A.J. Colombo. Has Western Carolina and these fans jumping up and down here in Cullowee. Kyle Rush along with Jason Patterson and Jason. So far about the type of game we expected, both offenses moving the ball, the difference, some key stops by the Paladin defense. Well, and one of the greatest assets for Western Carolina University on this day is this fan base, yep. this crowd, this environment. So the more you see of what you just saw, which is Western Carolina finishing drives and getting this crowd involved, the, the tougher it becomes on the Furman Paladin. So after they were quieted a little bit with a 13-0 start for Furman, Western Carolina kind of steadying things with an impressive drive. One of the merging storylines here, though, you said it earlier, it looks like we're not going to see any more of Desmond Reed, at least not in the near future. And that means a, a great deal of the load will need to be carried by the rest of the surrounding cast for Western Carolina. That becomes one of the key storylines on this day. Well, another key storyline has been the play of Tyler Huff through two drives. He's back to the air to start their third and a minimum game, but it will pick up three or four on the quick pass to the edge. We haven't seen the big pop run, if you will, from Dominique Roberto, but it's been enough to really set up this passing game. Well, and on more than one occasion, it looked as if Western Carolina had him hemmed in only to see him slip away. So just a hard runner who is good after first contact and the ability to bring him down fairly quickly going to be key in this one. And here is that big run across midfield is Roberto and thundering his way down the sideline all the way down. They're gonna mark him just inside the 20 yard line as it's a big time run. It wasn't Roberto, it was one of the many Furman backs and the speed of the edge and all kinds of room to gallop there. Well, think about this, Wayne Anderson Jr. with a burst of speed showing you how elusive he can be. And it goes back to, regardless of who's back there, we've said it a couple <laughs> of times, Kyle, that Furman offensive line. This is a team that is so experienced, so solid in the trenches, and they make plenty of room for the explosive speed of Wayne Anderson Jr. to go on display here. Well, how to keep momentum on your side. Just give it to this Paladin running attack. Guess who's back now? Yeah, and that is Roberto, who continues to move the pile. Looked like he was going to be stymied at the 13, 14 yard line. Got it all the way down to the 10. And now 
An injured man down there. It looks like one of the key members up front for that Paladin line, but there you see Roberto just plowing the pile forward on another big gain. And it's an offensive line that has had some injury trouble the last couple weeks. Lost their left guard a week ago, and now another injury is it looks like Wyatt Hughes, the starting center, slow to get up. Well, and that a moment of concern for Furman Paladin fans when you consider just how much a part of the game plan that group up front is. I mean, you saw it on the run just a few moments ago from Wayne Anderson Jr. What a luxury it is for Furman to be able to give Roberto a breather and insert a guy like Anderson Jr. who can put together the type of runs we just saw that flipped the field. So good news for Furman. It appears as if the center is going to be able to depart under his own power. That's a good sign. So Hughes will have to miss at least one play, and that makes this whole, anytime it's a center, it can make some coaches a little antsy, especially in a timing offense that both of these can be. So we'll see what the offensive coordinator, Justin Roper and company dial up here on second and short. As Volmer, the new center, and he helps pave the way for Roberto, who's in the end zone for six. And watch Roberto pre-play on this design. He stutter steps to the right just a bit, allows him to build a head of steam as he comes to receive the football on the handoff. It is downhill from there, and the first touchdown of the day for Roberto now in the books. Well, here, there's that step you see, and then downhill. And when he gets downhill, he's pretty good as he pounds this one into the end zone. And Furman strikes again. We talked about the answer for Western Carolina. Furman wastes little time with an answer of their own to go back up a pair of scores. Well, and you gave his numbers. Over 400 yards, tremendous yep. impact the last couple of times these two teams have played. And he seems to relish the moment. Again, you're talking about a great player no matter who's on the other side, but has really been a nemesis for Western Carolina with the way he has performed. And it continues with his first touchdown of the day. Extra point try is up and good so the lead back to 13 for Furman as they use the run game to march their way back down the field and go back up a couple scores and the Paladins have their response now which defense will get the next stop as we roll up so Catamount fans trying to gear up that offense one more time after once again Furman goes up a couple scores it's been through the air the first two drives the last drive featured that much touted from a ground game. Yeah, Roberto, who else? <laughs> Again, getting the job done as he finished and capped that drive. But Kyle, they found out right away, these fans, that Furman came in riding a great deal of momentum. A 27-21 road win on the road at Sanford. The reigning champs in Birmingham falling at the hands of this Paladin group. And you see here, Furman, in Hunts. an effort to get the football right back, decides to go with it on the kick. Did he get it before it went out of bounds? He did not. And that will bring the flag out. It was close there down the boundary. As we take another look, we saw the diving attempt made here right on the sideline, but appeared he was just out of play. Well, it was going to be occurred. feast or famine, right? <laughs> You're either going to have the football back or it goes out of bounds in this case. And Western should have really good field position following the penalty uh, up near midfield. So it'll be a good start for the Catamounts. Well, one would think they did drop the flag. And let's see how they sort this all out. But if Furman not content with the 20 to seven lead at the 11-25 mark of the second period. We're just gonna make the point a moment ago, the 27-21 win over the reigning champs on the road. Nine conference victories in a row, dating back to that contest with Sanford a season ago. This is a Furman team with an experienced group, a great deal of confidence, and they have come in, handled the environment of the top 10 showdown with gusto to begin things. But Western Carolina is still very much in the thick of it here as they go to work, and it's taking a moment for our officiating crew to sort out exactly where the football is going to be following the kick out of bounds. Well, it's been the balance of the Furman offense that has really set the tone early. This is now a lengthy discussion, and both head coaches out near the numbers on their respective side as Clay would, Hendricks and Kerwin Bell interested spectators. You would think it would be as cut and dry as either it was recovered inbounds or the kick went out of bounds, which you saw the flag drop to that end. 
but it looks like after they sort it all out, it's simply going to be Western Carolina football at the 40-yard line, Kyle. At any rate, good field position for Cole Gonzalez and company. Fresh off their first touchdown drive of the game. Still over 11 minutes to go until halftime as Furman shows some pressure off the edge. It comes, Gonzalez steps up, looks, fires, wide open is Lee. That's a first down, and he scrambles into Paladin territory. That time, perhaps the best poise we've seen from Gonzalez in the pocket to date. Great start to the drive. To go back just one moment, the only other thing you could be looking at potentially there is you think through all the scenarios, it was touched but not controlled before the out of bounds, and thus the, the drive starting at the 40, but that's the start you want if you're Western. 20 yards on first down. Gonzalez slides left, throws right, and finds his tight end, A.J. Ballinger. You can really yards. trace every drive in this game to a spot where, where the teams could have scored, right, yep. to this juncture. You keep pointing to those two fourth down stops in Furman territory by the Furman defense, really the difference in the game. So moving the ball has not been a problem. Finishing these drives now critical as we move through the second period. Sets up second and five. Little motion. Gonzalez will hand it. It's Adams who stiff arms his way to the outside, nearly broke loose as the middle linebacker, Braden Gilby, was hanging on for dear life and made a really good tackle in space as he's a couple yards shy of a first down. Yeah, David White Jr. on the move pre-play. You said it in the end, designed to go Adams' direction. Sophomore has been impressive so far for fans who maybe haven't been with us to this juncture. We saw just a couple of carries for Desmond Reed and one pass targeted his direction. They were tremendous plays with great results, but he has since departed. It's been all Adams in the backfield. It's Adams up the middle. There is no room here as the Furman front absolutely got in there in a hurry. There was a host of them there, and the Paladins swallow this run play up. Boy, it is an imposing group wearing those white jerseys on that front defensively for the Furman Paladins. You can see that I mean, the size is clear even from the distance of the press level, and it certainly fills up your screen from wherever you may be watching. It is uh, an imposing group, and they have made their presence known in this first half today. Callie Chiswick in on the stop on that last one. Plenty of defensive genes in his blood. We'll talk about that after fourth down. Pressure comes again. Gonzalez fires for Lee and incomplete. No flag. Well, Lee had to make an adjustment. The ball underneath he and the defender. And as he tried to work his way back, ran into the coverage. And you hear the Western Carolina fans. Here's one more look at it for those of you at home. Sometimes you'll get that call, particularly when the DB never turns. But it's another scenario in which Western Carolina sees the, the end result that you had documented a couple of times already in this game. So Furman will get the ball at the 32-yard line after yet another first down or fourth down stop. Furman's had the ball three times. It's been three touchdowns. They've done it in different ways now. And you get the sense of big possession here for this Western Carolina defense. Your punter on this team don't expect to be very busy. <laughs> Not with that guy running the football. It's Roberto to the outside. More room to scamper. He's in Western Carolina territory and a pickup of 20 plus yards on first down. Well, picks up right where he left off, capping off that last drive with a touchdown. And this is too familiar a refrain for Western Carolina fans. What a tremendous back Roberto is. Just runs with such force, and another big play by Roberto. Marches it inside the 40-yard line after one play. Toss to him again, again with some space. And Western Carolina does get there, but it's still a pickup of five or six as the Catamount defense secondary had to come flying in. It's Lee Campbell, the safety, who eventually got him on the ground. Kind of make that comment tongue in cheek, but you look at the way Roberto's running the football, you see Western Carolina in position to go for it on fourth down with field position along the way, and it is a day where if you're a part of that kicking unit, you may not be very busy. Both <laughs> these teams so explosive, Kyle. It's why you have to take advantage of those opportunities. Yep. So far it has been the Paladins doing so. Anderson back in the backfield with Huff. 
looking for room. There is none. This time, the Catamount defense extracts some revenge, perhaps, as they wrestle him down in the backfield. Well, he called Lee Campbell's name a moment ago. Worth highlighting his effort again here, right in the thick of things for a Western Carolina defense that needed a lift, and suddenly they forced a key third down. Well, third down, something this Furman offense hasn't had much of to this point in the proceedings. The big one on their first drive on a quarterback scramble. Not the only time the Paladins have faced third down so far today. This one, third and five. Huff looking for room and he's swallowed in the backfield. The Catamount defense swarms him and the first big play from the defensive unit for Western Carolina. Two backs to protect him in the formation. Somehow, Hayward McQueen Jr. still able to break through and in doing so, he gets this Catamount defense off the field. Timely play defensively for Western Carolina and particularly McQueen Jr. And now the Catamount Special Teams unit scrambling a bit here, and that's going to force a timeout. Just when we talk about punters not being in use that often, <laughs> here for the first time today, one placed in effect. A timeout, you said it, called for before we get there. But cannot state enough how important that stop is for Western Carolina defensively. Not just because of game situation and scoreboard, Kyle, but also from a confidence yeah. standpoint moving forward the rest of the day. Well, and you look sort of the unconventional punting formation there on that last sequence and had the special teams unit scrambling a bit and time was called and we talked to coach clay hendricks this week he said special teams might decide this one and so wouldn't have been surprised to perhaps see a trick up his sleeve and we'll see what they do now after the timeout on fourth and ten inside the 40 yard line so you're sort of near that no man's land as you see coach kerwin bell I think maybe a little more than a, hey, how you doing today type conversation with our officials out there. Well, if you wonder about his fire, it's certainly on display in these moments. He, he's turned to this program. You think about his success. We talked about it as a player in Florida, bringing a championship, something. You think about the history of Florida from now backward. But when you talk about his days, they were doing things for the very first time. His third year of Valdosta State, his third year Jacksonville now here, all effective. And this is tough. That's a word in golf we don't mention very much. Off the side of the foot and a shanked punt will give Kerwin Bell's team really good field position on the other side of the break. Five teams have taken the playing service here at EJ Whitmire Stadium. A lot of hype build up in and this is the part of the game, middle stages of the game, Jason, where you start to say, okay, all the hype pregame buildups out of the way and it turns into more of what a football game, if you will. But Furman, the early advantage so far. Adams bounced out of a tackle and streamed a, a pickup of 10. And while he bounced out of that tackle, just slowing him down there might have prevented an even bigger play. Yeah, enough to move the chains, though, and a good spark for Western Carolina coming out of the timeout. You, know, you make a great point, Kyle. It's down to football now. It's what happens between the white lines. It's, it's the rhythm, the flow. It's the reps that you've been getting in in a week of practice that now you try to translate into on-field success. But don't underestimate the ability of this fan base to make a difference. You know, they're talking upwards of 13,000 here today, perhaps in the stadium. And if Western Carolina is able to get some things rolling, they can be a factor. Flipping out to Adams again. Some room there around midfield. Tries to reverse it. Might have lost a couple going backwards. So it's a short game in the end. The shot play, if you will, was on, but Furman defended it well as they tracked Lee on the go round. Adam's still able to work it into a second down and eight. Boy, you, you can see how he can dance in and out of trouble, can be shifty in a very positive way at times, and we'll see just how effective he is throughout the day. Now carrying much of the load again with Reed limited in his ability today. And off, here's Adams again. Adams thundering his way into Paladin territory. Another first down. Perhaps we talked about it with Furman. Doesn't matter which back's back there. As explosive as these offensive line has been, credit the guys up front for Western Carolina opening up some holes for Adams. No doubt about it. 22 embracing the moment, but it is that group of bigs up front making the room for him. Pressure comes, flips it out, and here's Adams again. 
And a veteran play there from Cole Gonzalez. Pressure came right up the middle and took what he could for a gain of one or two. Well, it's Heroes Day, right? Yeah. And the unsung heroes in the sport of football are those who do the hard work in the trenches. And if you like offensive line play, maybe you're watching this from the perspective of a former offensive lineman. You understand the game within the game that takes place on each snap of the football. You're looking at two of the best in the entire conference, uh, really in the entire country, two of the best lines here today. And they're making plenty of room for these talented playmakers. Kerwin Bell had actually given his offensive name, or offensive line rather, a nickname as Adams plunges ahead for five or six more. He said, we started calling him the Great Wall of Cullowee walking around campus, and they sort of have gone around with that moxie, if you will, throughout their business this year. And anytime, Clay Hendricks said, anytime you have an offense that has 500 yards, the people up front doing a good job, and another running back into the fray there for Western Carolina on that last carry, setting up third and short. Yeah, they may not get the accolades, but uh, their work so critical to the ultimate outcome here today. Third and two or three for Cole Gonzalez and the Catamounts. Another handoff, some more room up front. And across the 30 for another first down. And something we don't see very often, Jason, room running the football against a very talented pallet in front. Well, and again, you go back and you give further credit to that offensive line. Not only are they doing this for the backs, they're doing this against the Furman defensive front, which had dominated that first quarter of action. You remember how off balance they kept Cole Gonzalez with their early approach, and now the adjustments being made by Western Carolina offensively. You hate to see this, another player being tended to by the training staff at the 304 mark. You certainly hope all will be well here. But Kyle, how often do coaches tell us the last few minutes of the first half, yep. the first few minutes of the second half, and the consequential moments they provide in a football game. So keep an eye on this final three and change with a major drive now mounting for Western Carolina to try to get this back to one possession going into the locker room. So junior nose guard Xavier Stevens, who's injured on the play. Kamari Reed, back-to-back -back carries for Western Carolina that has moved the chains. And the Paladins up to scores. And maybe some anxious moments when Furman had the ball, still up two scores. But the Catamounts get a stop on third down. A poor punt on the Paladin side of things. And now the offense in a groove as they march inside the Paladin 30. And this one, you could left pick side, a number here. Left <laughs> side took off. <laughs> yeah, one thing to keep in mind is they do take care of this penalty. Western Carolina had the football first. Yep. Makes this drive all the more important when you consider that Furman will have the ball to start the third quarter. Offense, number seven, five-yard penalty. And anytime you talk about two teams that have found their way into the top tens of the rankings, the reason we haven't seen too many penalties is you don't commit many when you're ranked inside the top ten. Neither one of these two teams do. In the Catamounts, you look at uh, nearly 56 yards a game, and that is it. But... A costly one there will set up first and 15. Yes, yeah, certainly at this juncture in the season, mid-October, two teams that have worked their way into some rhythm have been very crisp timing-wise offensively. Just a bit of a miscommunication there. So sets up first and long. As Gonzalez will take a play fake, has some time. This time he winds, fires deep, overshot his man. This time Western Carolina will get the flag and the coverage of Sincere Lee. And the Paladins had a couple guys back there. We'll see who the guilty party is. It might be the corner, Micah Robinson. You know, he trying to escape double coverage there, and it was the contact. Pass interference, defense, number 14. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. It was the contact of, of the trailing defender that made the difference here in Western Carolina, the beneficiaries of the interference call. You see just maybe the tug right there and see some of the Western Carolina faithful in the background calling for it early. They get it this time. They saw it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And big play there, though, because now second and 15 becomes first and 10 inside the red zone. Have to capitalize on these red zone opportunities if you're Western Carolina. Gonzalez flips it out wide and White reaches back at the last moment. Look what I found, touchdown Western Carolina.
Well, I give plenty of credit to Gonzalez here. This is a ball thrown to a spot, and you allow the receiver to make the timely adjustment. This is well done. And look at White. He turns just at the right moment and is able to work his way into the end zone. Western Carolina pulling back within a score now on the effective finish of this drive. A lot of time left here in the second period, but as important, Western Carolina able to capitalize on finishing this drive when so many had stalled in Furman territory in this first half. They saw Desmond Reed out there to greet the offense and not, he has the jersey on, but not in pants, so one would have to assume at least for the moment it might be the Adams show. That's good news for this offense, though. Adams has played well. Cole Gonzalez starting to find his groove, and David White Jr. in the end zone yet again for Western Carolina. So Cole Gonzalez, who got off to a less than ideal start for him, perhaps his best throw of the day, puts the Catamounts back within a score. And how about the route there, too, by David White? Telegraphed it inside, outside. The ball was perfectly placed and an easy score. Got a sense from the first few play calls in this one that White was going to be a big part of things, right? He returns to prominence on a big drive for Western Carolina. These two teams playing like control of the Southern Conference standings is on the line or something. <laughs> nice one-score game. Not only that, you look at the big picture and potentially some national seeding yes. come playoff yes. times. And it, it's not out of the question the way the whole FCAS playoff format works. These two teams could potentially see each other again. Furman knows that from early on in the Southern Conference, or go back to the days where Appalachian State was in. There was multiple years the Paladins and Mountaineers tangled twice a year. Well, how delightful that would be. I mean, Western Carolina comes into the week, ranked 14th in one poll, 8th in the other, making this a top 10 matchup as Furman is third and fourth, respectively, in the national polls that come out each week. So you're right, Kyle, this is something you could see again. You know, that game in the 90s between App State and Western here, and then the one that we talked about in the 80s, the two everybody pointed to is similar to this in terms of visibility and expectations. A few more points in that game in 94 Just already. A few. Yep. Just that a was few. a 12-7 affair. We're already north of that with two to go here in the first half. And, and then you go all, all the way back to 83. We haven't put meat on yeah. the bones yet, but yep. that really was the moment that folks uh, pointed to and said it compares most similarly to something that has never been seen here, these two teams going head-to-head. -head. And, and, you know, it, it helps that it's just the down-the-mountain rivalries to some degree that's in effect as well. A lot riding on this day. And you look at the Furman side, while, well, yes, they've built sort of that tradition, and this is the first top ten matchup for them in the regular season since 2004. And trying to take advantage of that moment turns the corner and a one-on-one -on -one tackle, something you don't see often on the in around. But it is the play of the safety for Western Carolina and Lee Campbell, who's made a couple really big tackles here in the second quarter. Lee Campbell again. He's the player who read it and in the open field was able to limit it. And as a result, it sets up a third down instead of movement of the chains. And this is going to be an important third down with just a minute and change remaining in the half. Lee Campbell, by the way, redshirt freshman for Kerwin Bell and his staff. Playing like a veteran today. Handoff up the middle. Roberto spins off a tackle in the second effort. Got him the first down. You nailed it. It was really the turn and the spin after he was met that got Roberto the first down, the yardage he needed. And how often has that been the case for Roberto across the last several years in this rivalry? He finds a way to get that extra yard or two on that second effort. And in this case, it means the drives continues for Furman. Clock winding now inside of 50 seconds. As Roberto checks out, Paladins don't seem in a particular hurry here. As Huff will drop back to throw. Pressure comes, steps up in the pocket, Huff on the move, spins free of another, and gets across midfield. And hangs on to the football as the Catamounts were prying at it. But now you might see the tempo ramp up a notch. And now a timeout. Yeah, the other thing Furman has going for them, they preserved all three timeouts to this point. Here's the first, so two remaining for the Paladins, who are now at midfield right on the heart of that Western Carolina logo, just 50 yards away from what would be pay dirt and certainly well within an opportunity to get into field goal range quickly. So 26 seconds, a lot more than that really on yep. the board for Furman when you consider the two timeouts in the back pocket of Coach Hendricks and company. Well, if there's a team that knows 
how to score fast. Western Carolina has seen it. They've done it. They only needed 53 against Chattanooga a couple weeks ago. And now we see McQueen Jr. there and company trying to come up with another big stop. It was a, perhaps a turning point on that third down stop last time Furman had the football. Huff again with his legs on a big play. And we've seen that a couple times. Hasn't used his legs a lot, but he has in big moments so far in this first half. And keep in mind when you think about the ability to tack on three here, if you're Furman perhaps, you did have the missed extra point a little bit yep. earlier in the game. We'll see how large that looms as the contest rolls along, but that's the reason it sits 20 to 14. Look on the screen inside and through the hands and dangerously in the air. The crowd here at Western Carolina thought, well, maybe if one of our guys could have sensed it, it could have been a big turnover as is. It falls innocently to the turf. Issue is they were all zoned in on uh, the potential targets for Furman. All those heads forward into that uh, short zone area for the Paladins, and as a result, it'll fall harmlessly to the turf. Well, 23 seconds now, second down. As time again, fires over the middle. He's got his tight end again, who survives a big lick and a big catch out of the 21-yard line. Well, you know, and the impressive part of this on the backside of it, Kyle, is the protection of the football. Watch as Ply knows he's going to be hit Time at out. the end of this. Furman. Pulls the Minute football into Time his body half. and Third is able to make sure it's not going to come loose on the timely arrival of the Western Carolina secondary. So nicely done, both on the route and the catch, but also with the way he made sure that it stood. Now the second timeout burned by Furman as it stops with 16 seconds to play in the half. How often in these type of matchups is it a player that doesn't necessarily have a history of those big type of plays? Pline coming into this game, just 10 catches all year. He's got a touchdown and a couple others including that big one to set up shop inside the 25-yard line. Well, and that one catch may mean three points. Yep. And you know what three points can be in so many of these Southern Conference football games <laughs> on a given Saturday. So it may very well translate. Now, not to say Furman's not in a position to get seven here. They still are with 16 to play. But he certainly has them solidly now in range to try for a field goal to end the half at the very least for the Paladins. Well, and... Furman has had some issues in the kicking game. We saw the missed extra point earlier that Western Carolina was off sides. They want six, and Huff misfires high. Had his man in the end zone. He beat Andreas Keaton in coverage that time, and it is Ben Ferguson again who shook free. Yeah, you had to try for it. You had the sophomore in the general vicinity, but just too much underneath it as Western Carolina had that covered right at the goal line. 10 seconds, you're, you're not in a position now where this is the last play of the half. And again, still a timeout, even if you decided or were able to complete something in play, you can still stop the clock if you're Furman. You get a sense maybe one more shot to the end zone before a potential field goal. They're thinking six, fires, got a man, caught, touchdown, Paladins. Boy, game changer on this reception, just a beautifully thrown ball. Now there is a flag down and the reaction from Huff leads you to believe this is coming back. And how big of a penalty is that? There haven't been many called in this entire first half. That might be the biggest of consequence. As the holding penalty, you see it right there, 94 for Western Carolina was making a charge on the quarterback they grabbed on and help preserve the throw. So now they'll march it back 10 yards. Now there's just three seconds and a much tougher field goal try as Furman will call time. I'm with you, Kyle. Not only does it take six off the board, it also now makes it a little tougher on the kick should you go there as a result of the penalty. So that is a huge call just when it looked like Furman was going back to that high water mark with the lead. Well, and it was the pressure off the edge that initiated the hold as Western Carolina tried to create some pressure, force the issue. That's what Coach Kerwin Bell talks about all the time. A mantra you see a lot in the facility, we decide. And so put that pressure on, forcing it, Furman to make a decision there. And they held on trying to get the hold by the officiating crew. 
unable to that time. Took away what was a beautiful throw from Tyler Huff. Now decision time. We've had some issues in the kicking game. This was set up to be 46, 47 yard try if they decide to go there. And that looks like what they've decided to do. Yeah, it's going to be pushing 50 by the time you snap it back and get it down. In fact, it's going to be right on the 40 yard line. So you're looking at a 50 yard try. The good thing is right between the hashes for Furman, if you're looking at it from a Paladin's perspective, he's going to be straight on here. So we'll see if Kerwin Bell elects to call time. They'll let it play out instead. And now Kerwin Bell does call that timeout. Had a couple to work with timeouts time wise. Did Western, Western Carolina, Carolina to ice the, the kicker. First one taken. So again, 50 yard try. We talked about the the extra point scenario. If you weren't with us, it was a missed extra point, but there was a penalty for offsides on the play. Yep. And that allowed Furman to go for two. They ultimately failed on the two-point conversion. So that's the way that officially goes in the stat book. But it was originated by the missed extra point, which hit the upright. But this one from between the hashes and going to be placed on the field right at 50 yards away. Ian Williams, the kicker for the Paladins, made his upbringing, came from Weddington High School, a program that had known a thing or two about big games in their own right. And now trying to cash in a two-score lead is Williams, who lines things up here from 50 yards to try to send us to halftime. Crowd roars to their feet before the 50-yard try. Kick is on the way. And it is no good. He missed it wide to the right. And the Catamount defense holds and will take that ride of momentum into the locker room. Who can finish their drives in the second half? You know, Western Carolina not going to be crawling from as large a deficit this time as perhaps as what we saw a year ago, down just six at the break. So this one's still anybody's for the taking. And that's exactly what you would hope in a top 10 showdown. Well, and you get the sense that this opening drive of this half could go a long way and help determining things as well. End over end kick fielded at the five. Paladins will take it from there across the 20. Some room to be had perhaps. And it closes down quickly. Late flag comes in at the moment. He's out to the 29, 30 yard line. We'll check the marker. Uh, here is a penalty right away as we begin to talk about some of those peripheral categories that you keep an eye on that will affect field position on this drive. Plenty of credit to the redshirt freshman out of Dallas there, Ben Crossdale for Furman. Yeah. When that had a chance to, to transpire into some extracurricular, he shut it down pretty hold. quickly, nicely done. Doing the return, number 25. So it's a hold. Five. First down. And this will be the worst starting field position Furman has had so far today. Oh, it hadn't really slowed down either offense so far. But inside the 20 yard line, they'll mark it just inside the 17. So a long field to work with for Furman. Something we haven't seen yet, a three and out, but one would be big if Western Carolina would be able to force it. But Dominique Roberto and company are going to have a big say in that. As we thought, this really going to affect Furman's field position, that flag. A couple of flags, one at the end of the half, one at the start of the third quarter against the Paladins. And it's in and out of the hands. Good coverage there as well. And but, guess who? It's yeah. Campbell again. I was going there with you. You know who it was, right? 33 has been everywhere. Furman has to believe there are more than one on the field uh, wearing that jersey today with the, as much of a difference as Lee Campbell has made for Western Carolina defensively. Well, and the wild part is you look at the depth chart, he's number two as far as the safeties are go behind Samari Dukes, who's had some good plays in his own right. But a big play there on first down. Paladins go to the ground here. More Roberto. He'll get a few, but a big early third down here in the third quarter. It'll be third and five or six. Roberto. And he cat him out shaking up. Roberto with the, the football again. He went. 11 for 89 with a touchdown in the first half, just tracking his numbers after having the career day against Western Carolina the, the last time out when they met in Greenville. You said it, tending to an injured catamount at right around the 18-yard line. I'm trying to see who that is at the moment. Is the athletic training staff out to attend to him? But it was a big third down on Furman's first drive, and that was Campbell. Yeah. The player shaking up as big of a half as he has played. Certainly hope 
Manning's able to come back in short order. Looks like he's going to be able to pop up under his own power. You know, you kind of take in what we've seen so far in the game, Kyle. For all the talk about quick strike offensive capability, it's been the defensive stops that have been the real storyline. The other thing that you have to note as we start the third quarter, just a couple of carries and the 39-yard reception for Desmond Reed. He has not returned since, so keep that in the back of your mind also. Third down over the middle, got his man across the 30 for a first down. It's Ben Ferguson, another one of those players. Coach Hendricks talked to us. He said he comes up with the big catch. In the big moment, he gets open. Well, and this was one. That's a possession reception as it moves the chains and extends the drive. And so they were talking in their offensive meetings, and he went through a sequence with Tyler Huff, the quarterback, and said, okay, big sequence, what do you look for? He said, three's probably open. He was that time, and it moves the six for a first down. Well, and as well as he is, uh, or as effective as he is, I should say, in route running and his capability to reel in the football, doesn't take much for him to be open. And this time the defense gets in the backfield, and Anderson met with heavy resistance there. Another big lick from the secondary. It's Hayward McQueen from the linebacker that laid the lick that time. Remember, Wayne Anderson Jr. had a 54-yard run. That was the longest on the ground. Despite all the exploits of Roberto, it was Anderson Jr. with the run of the first half. But Western Carolina was waiting on him this time around. Sets up second and seven. Catamounts show pressure. Now back off, throw out wide. And Anderson in the passing game has a pitch and catch and sets up third down. This one more manageable, though at third and short and oftentimes where Roberto has become a big factor although don't see him out there at the moment and now here he comes on late for third and two. And we're just making sure the the batteries were fully charged as he makes his <laughs> way out there and I say that with all respect because here's a guy who you watch for that second effort you watch for that after contact moment on a down like this for Roberto he's been so good there today and throughout his career. He had one late in the first half that picked up a first down. They'll fake it to him this time and then throw it to him, and he's out across for a first down. As they find out of the backfield, Mayan Hicks with a pitch and catch. And so you like the play call there from the offensive coordinator and Justin Roper. Mix it up a little bit. Another well, first down. When Roberto's been so good, you can use him as a decoy in a key moment. They do so here effectively to move the chains. An early note worth watching. Third downs here in the third quarter. Tyler Huff is two for two, picked up a first down twice through the air. First down play here. They'll hand it up the middle. Catamounts get back there again. And not often Roberto doesn't have room to hide, but it's Hayward McQueen Jr. first there to help bring him down and Campbell in on yet another stop. And not McQueen Jr.'s first real moment of impact. He had another tackle earlier in this game, which uh, let his uh, attention to detail be known, and he comes up huge right here. You said it. This is a, an important drive, both in setting the tone of containing Roberto moving forward, but also in getting this crowd back into it. You know, mm -hmm. they, they worked their way from the seats to the concession area, maybe out into the parking lot for a little bit. They're all filing back in now. And to get the Western Carolina crowd energized with something positive from this defense, a big part of using this environment to their advantage today. And Furman forced to burn a timeout here is the play call. Late getting in, we'll take it with them. Second and long coming up. As we march on here in the third quarter, so the Paladins talking things over as they get set for second and nine here. They've converted twice on third down already here on this drive as we welcome you back inside E.J. Whitmire Stadium, home of one of two top ten showdowns in the FCS. The other one a little after dark action on the East Coast in Big Sky Country, but good one shaping up here is the handoff now pitched back. Flea flicker underway. And wide open again, it's the tight end unmarked. It's Mason Pline down to the 25-yard line. Well, Mason Pline has been one of the emerging playmakers in this contest. They picked their spots going to him, and this is well drawn up to get him in the open field out in the flat. And that's going to put uh, another near red zone opportunity in effect for Furman, just nicely executed by the Paladins. His fourth catch now over 70 yards. Pline, 10 catches for 71 yards for the entire season coming into this one. So he is certainly 
made his presence felt in Furman's biggest game so far to date this year. Grad student out of the state of Michigan having a big day. They fake it and around. And nice crackback block led to some room, but a physical end to that play as eventually they're able to make the tackle out wide. Boy, all sorts of wrinkles we're seeing here in the third quarter from Justin Roper and this Paladin offense. Well, and all sorts of playmakers that are, that are getting their hand in things today. Colton Hinton, a freshman wide receiver out of Ashburn, Virginia, getting the call. The Stonebridge High School product out of Ashburn, Virginia. Also in the mix here is it's right on the 20-yard line now, and right here comes the red zone opportunity. On schedule here as well, second and four. Play fake, pressure, and throws it up at the last moment. Nobody over there. They'll say receiver was in the area, so alertly got rid of it, did Huff. It'll set up third down. Catamounts want an intentional grounding. No flag comes. Well, they're going to credit Dean with being there. You'll see him jersey number 11 in the area. But that, that thrown well beyond his location. And you can hear Catamount fans. The important thing, the pressure at least forcing now is what is going to be a third down, another third down. But the, you said it, Kyle. This is where Furman has been so effective today. Four for five on third downs as Coach Kerwin Bell looks on. They've had a couple big stops on this end of the field. Roberto gets the give, spins forward again for a first down. The second time in as many third down carries, Roberto with a spin move after contact picks up the first. Just seems like in this rivalry series, the last handful of years, when Furman needs Roberto, he's able to get uh, just enough, sometimes a lot more than enough, but in this case, just enough to move the chains, a fresh set of downs at the 15. So Roberto's work, the, the timely catches from Mason Pline, the Ferris State University transfer, which was a two-sport athlete, basketball, football, and he's done a little bit of everything at the tight end position for Furman on this drive and today. And off right side, and how about the solo stop there defensively? Not often one man gets him on the ground. That's the middle linebacker, Leal Yamato Feo, who brings him down. Well, good start in an effort to try and limit Furman. Remember, you already have the missed extra point, the missed field goal on the contest. So Western Carolina grabbing a little bit of momentum at the end of the half by holding Furman to the field goal that was ultimately missed, holding them to the field goal opportunity. And, and you know if you can stall these drives in this spot, nothing is certain in terms of points on the board. Two banks beside Huff on second out. He'll give, coming near side, nothing doing there either for Roberto. And now it's third and long as the Catamount contingent got there, Antoine Williams that time and now the linebackers you see really playing downhill against this Paladin rushing attack. Well and Rod Gaddison making sure the senior among those there helping to make sure he goes right down the line and is unable to turn the corner. Now here's a third down with some distance so a real opportunity here for the Western D. There haven't been many drop back pass situations in this game. We'll see how Huff handles it here on third and nine. Straight drop, has time. Huff evaluates, a lot of time, now running out. Flag is out. Huff flips it out of bounds. And now decision time if you're Kerwin Bell, do you take the hold or you take the down? Holding, offense, number 55. That penalty is declined, fourth down. You had a sense that this may be exactly what would happen, a decline of the penalty to make sure you have the fourth down scenario in effect. And Furman now rushing that third unit onto the field. How about the coverage there? Not often coverage holds for that long. It does here. And so now Furman will rely on a field goal. This one from 31 and a different kicker in there. Left-footed well. look. Left-footed look this time. And they bobble the snap. All sorts of discombobulation. Catamounts pick it up. This is a live football. And out across the 20 yard lines, Clay Hendricks said special teams would be a factor. It has been a disaster on special teams for Furman. Special teams trending Western Carolina. This because of difficulty with the snap. So you have the missed extra point early that results in 
a two-point try following the penalty, which is no good. Then you have the field goal missed at the end of the half after the penalty took the touchdown off the board. And now to start the third period, another what looked to be chip shot style field goal this go round that is not to be as a result of the issues on the snap. So Western Carolina in position for the first time today to march down, perhaps look at a glance at the lead. And don't forget too the shank punt where yes. they could have pinned Western Carolina deep. That's a great point. And now the Catamounts with the ball just trailing by six. Fires Lee outside. Catch made, pick up a six or seven. And you mentioned this crowd, they've really started to jump into it last couple moments. Needed a defensive lift to get things rolling. That certainly happened. But the other thing, Kyle, when you take as much time off the clock as Furman did there in the third period and yep. in the end have nothing to show for it, in the same way the Paladins owned the final stages of that first half in the end went to the locker room with nothing to show for it. Those are big momentum swings in favor of homestanding Western Carolina. The Paladins, going back to that first half to your point, Jason, have had the ball for 10 consecutive minutes of possession time. No points to show for it. That a big swing as I believe it's Lee they're attending to down there on the sideline. Second time athletic training staff has attended to Lee today. And see him walking on his own power there. That's certainly a good sign. But Coach Kerwin Bell said it. He said, we have lots of guys we feel really good about. And we talked with both these coaches about how do you share the wealth a little bit. And so Lee, certainly a loss. But Catamounts have shown several other playmakers as well as it's second and four. Well, both these teams have a system in place, and it's plug and play in many ways. Great athletes, yes, but the depth is there. There's one of them as Gonzalez finds White again. We've called his name more than a few times. This one, a first down, and pushes it out toward the 40-yard line, and now Western Carolina showing some pace here. Most recent points in the contest, a 17-yard pass caught by White from Gonzalez to make it 2014. They connect again here as it serves as kind of the springboard moment of this drive for Western. And how big, too, after that big play on special teams, make sure you get at least one first down. Catamounts have that, looking for more. Gonzalez fires. It's White again. 20 more yards nearly. It's a pickup of 18, another first down. Gonzalez and White all of a sudden are the belief that this is happening in the backyard, right? A little <laughs> toss and catch between these two, and just like that, the Catamounts now on the march. I tell you what, for all the Thanksgiving family football games, I want that combination on my side. It has worked beautifully for the Catamounts at this point. Hanoff Adams, pickup of a couple. And not a bad idea there, Kyle. After a couple of quick passes that have tremendous success, you wonder, can you perhaps catch that Furman front napping a little bit with an inside run? Credit Furman, the Paladins were waiting. Remember, this is a front for Furman that had dominated the first quarter of this football game. And I say dominated the first quarter because every pass being delivered by Gonzalez was a split second ahead of where he would like for it to be. He's been able to settle in a little more now, but that front still very much awake as they remind you there. Gonzalez, interesting here. He goes out to the receivers to relay a message. Time on the play clock as it now hits five. Man in motion. Gonzalez saw something in the D, fires away, and inside the red zone goes Western Carolina. And the message worked from Cole Gonzalez. One thing to spot it, another thing to communicate it. And what you have to do at the end is also execute it. He's able to do all three things. Look at the youngster serving really on this play to provide a snapshot of what a true field general looks like for Western. And I think he's a sophomore. Yeah, this Cole Gonzalez. That's why we say the youngster spotted it, communicated it, and then fulfilled it at the end of it. Calvin Jones on the receiving end. As back to the ground goes Western Carolina and Adams, a yard, maybe two. That was something that really started to take shape, too, in that second quarter was Western Carolina's success on the ground despite no Desmond Reed. But Reed carried the ball twice go. early in the game, to your point, Kyle. A couple of carries for 10 yards. Remember that one first down carry? Saw a burst of speed. He looked great. He later caught the... The, the one pass, the reception of 39 yards, it all seemed to be clicking in the right direction. But since that time, he's been spotted on the sideline on a crutch with a ball cap on, and it's been the rest of the playmakers called upon to step up. 
Gonzalez, no one in the backfield with him on second and long. All day to throw. Now a roll left, fires, and it is intercepted in the end zone. The Paladin defense comes up big. It's Kelly Chiswick. You could see him ball hawking it there, and he's got the pedigree, right? Chiswick certainly with the, the name, the, the moniker. They're going to talk about whether he was able to control the football right down near the goal line. But if this is an interception, it is a game-changing moment, and there would be that first turnover of the contest forced by the Furman Paladins. The play under review. Here's another look. And at the moment, an interception from Cali Chiswick. And they're going to make sure does he have possession and the ball. Take a look at the Auburn high grad as he ends up jumping this route right in the front corner of the end zone just before the ball arrives. After well timed. The, the ball was intercepted by the defense and taken, ball, and taken out of bounds at the one yard line. It it's just a matter of whether he was in bounds, First and you goal. just heard the verdict. That is the case. You put it all together. The Auburn high grad, Cali Chiswick, son of Gene Chiswick. You see his football IQ yeah. as a part of that football family on display in these moments. But a big part of that review, it was originally a touchback, now at the one yard Great line. Point. So now it shapes up to be a little different. Cole Gonzalez, who hasn't turned the ball over much, that's just interception number three all year. And the first turnover of the ball game for a Furman team that prides himself, as you alluded to earlier, on turnover yep. Tuesday. What did Coach Hendricks tell us? He said, we have turnover Tuesday. If two turnovers are forced during the practice, the coaches do up-downs. And you think these players aren't all about that? If they don't force two turnovers, they do up-downs. They want it in practice this week. They just want it on the field right here. And off outside, not much there. Roberto pushes forward to maybe the two. Won it talking in terms of winning that turnover. Yes. And right now they would be winning the turnover battle. Obviously a lot of football left. And Western's still in a position to win the moment, Kyle, because of, as you said, the change of the spotting of the ball at the one-yard line gives the Western defense a chance to turn this into a premier moment in the game if they can answer. But how about we mentioned the lineage – well, why is a kid at Furman and Auburn High? Well, his dad was coaching a national championship roster at the time. As this handoff around the edge and getting out near the 10-yard line. He, he and Coach Hendricks go back a long yep. way. It was a big win to, to get his commitment. They were battling Chattanooga for the right to have this young man on campus. He's worked through some injuries, including missing the 2021 campaign, but came back some key pick sixes a year ago, and he has a major interception here in the game of the year thus far in the Southern Conference. And a major third down brewing here, third and three. They got to get it out to the 11. High formation, Roberto dots it at the back end. He'll get the carry right side, and he's got yet another first down. Third and three, third and four, sort of like the old Army days, Navy. Third and two or three, doesn't seem like much of an issue with number eight carrying it. Well, and this was huge because you look up all of a sudden, you're working your way toward the latter stages yep. of the third period. And more than that, when it appeared as if Western Carolina was in position to set up great field position on a punt return, perhaps the kicker standing in his own end zone to kick it away. Instead, now Furman gives the defense a breather and has a little breathing room themselves with which to work offensively. With some special teams that have been an adventure for the Paladins, at least so far. First down, Kerry's going to pick up a couple. Yeah, can you imagine the, the added pressure after the prior punt, yep. Kyle, to standing back in your own end zone, perhaps looking at pressure from Western Carolina. That's at least put off for, for now, thanks to the latest of the key third down conversions. Something that has been a major strength for Furman in this football game. Yeah, Furman on the year on third downs. At times, it's been a little Jekyll and Hyde. They convert under 47% of the time. They've only missed on one so far all game long. Wines, fires, and that throw, dangerous for a moment. Long throw outside the numbers, but it's long and complete. And here is one of those big third downs. This one, third and eight inside your own 20-yard line if you're the Paladins. He's looking for Hinton again, who had one of the major contributions on that most recent drive for Furman. You said it. Fans starting to get into it here at EJ Whitmire with what's on the line on this third down. Fans climb to their feet as Huff. There's a message for his running back, Anderson. 
The sprinkle shiftlet in motion, straight drop, pressure comes, throw, caught, and he does not have the yardage. He's a yard or two shy, and you would imagine, even though Dean a couple yards shy, you got Roberto. Boy, be a heck of a roll of the dice to go, and it looks like the punting unit is coming on for Furman. But the first down that was secured by Furman making a major difference in terms of field position here as the Western return man is going to be standing inside his own 40. Still should be nice field position for the Paladins. And the most important thing, or for Western Carolina, I should say, and the most important thing, they're getting the football back. Here it is again. And this one shanked off the side of the foot. Excellent field position coming. Where will they mark this one? The Catamount sideline urging the side judge with every step inside the 40 to the 30. Five yard line nearly where the Catamounts had it when Cole Gonzalez threw the interception. I'm with you. You could almost hear the, the Western <laughs> Carolina sideline from here. Keep walking, please, sir. Keep walking, please, sir. He did all the way to the other side of the field. And just like that, Western Carolina with 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter, snatching all the momentum right back away with a nice defensive stand. There's one of those fans pointing that right. Hey, keep walking that way. Special teams, yeah. circle it, tuck it away in the back of your mind. It has been the Achilles heel for Furman thus far today. Gonzalez will set up shop at the 35. Play fake Adams, screen on the way, and it is over the head. Furman read that well, not much there had he caught it. And now we'll see how Gonzalez bounces back after throwing the interception, something he's only done two other times this year but in a big spot, still an opportunity to try in the last minute of the third quarter, go take the lead. But you saw a little bit of a rush there for Western Carolina trying to get the football out of there, and it took Adams as much time to kind of emerge from that oncoming front from Furman as uh, prevented him from being in, in a position to make the catch. But again, just the one down, Western Carolina still set up very nicely here. Second and 10 for Gonzalez. White, the man in motion. They'll hand Adams. There is nothing doing. Furman back there in a hurry and leading the charge. Matt Schvoka with a tackle for loss of three or four, and now it's third and long, and now a Paladin down along that front. And there's the look at how we've gotten here. Some big plays in that third quarter as Western Carolina has the ball, but a big third down looming. When we start quarter number four, as Western Carolina try in making those fourth quarter comebacks in the recent history of this rivalry, down just six points and with the football to start the final period. But faced with a third and long, they got to get all the way to the 25 yard line as Gonzalez prepares for a shotgun snap. Straight drop, pressure comes, hangs, doesn't have time for long and he's sacked. Back at the 46-yard line. And Furman's D comes up big yet again. The second sack of the afternoon, perhaps the biggest today. Well, it is 46 at the 46. Able to get in there, make it happen for the Furman Paladins. And you said it, the reemergence of that defensive front, that highly touted defensive front for Furman when the Paladins needed it most. And now fourth down right on that Western Carolina logo as it looks as if the deficit's going to hold in the early stages of the fourth. Alex Mayer from the bandit spot credited with the sack, and now the punt team for Western Carolina comes on. Spiraling kick, wobbly toward the sideline, and coming up to make the fair catch at the 20. So a net of 15 yards. If you're Furman, you got to think win. We trot our defense back out there at the 35-yard line. We take over the 20, a good recipe if you're firming, and now Roberto and company look to try to make it a two-score game. Boy, so much on the line in this game as we start the fourth period. As you kind of step out, maybe zoom out to a big picture yeah. for just a moment, Kyle. Lead in the standings, perhaps positioning in the FCS postseason. I mean, there is so much at stake in this one. You know, with the Hall of Famer here in Western Carolina and the Western North Carolina Mountains, Gary Harris tells you, haven't seen anything quite like this before. Yeah. You know you're watching something special in this top 10 matchup, and it has lived up to the height through three quarters plus. You just can't wait to see what's going to transpire here, but every snap now elevated with so much Southern Conference supremacy on the line. 
Gary Ayers, the longtime beloved play-by-play -play voice of the Catamounts as Roberto smashes his way outside for a pickup of two, maybe three. You know, you put this in perspective, he talked about the 83 game. Yep. We referenced the 90, early 90s, the last time you could really point back to that there was a game like this. So understand that if you're just finding us late in this contest, that this is a huge, not only Southern Conference game, but a huge game with FCS implications. The fans have turned out to prove it, and the game is living up to the expectations as well. And a team like Western Carolina, who has yet to win a Southern Conference championship, that would be in position, especially with a win here against the Paladins. But this Paladin rushing attack going to have something to say about that. It's Anderson across the 30 for another first down. Well, and you know Kerwin Bell and his staff, they know something about bringing yep. championships places. A lot of first-time impact for him across the course of his career, both as a player and a coach. But needs his defense to step up one more time here. Obviously, 13 minutes plus an eternity. Plenty of time left for both of these teams to touch the football on multiple occasions. But uh, right now, it's there for the taking. Anderson outside, tries to pick his way through, got thumped late. Boy, lucky to hang on to the football there as he gets to the 35 and then was met rudely by the Catamount defense. Isn't it interesting that all the talk coming in about the running backs, yes, but not so much Anderson on the Furman side of things and not so much Adams on the Western Carolina yeah. side of things. And yet Anderson has the longest run of the day and Adams has had to carry the majority of the load despite the yes continued impact of Dominique Roberto and the, the few moments that Reed was able to impact the game before he departed. It's been those other backs in the stable, and it may be those other backs that very well settle this in the end. Second and long, it's Huff. Huff again with his legs, races for a first down. That's stiff arm, we've seen that arm throw the football, it's pretty good with a stiff arm as well. And on the quarterback, Reed takes it for a nice gain in a first down. Well, in this second down run, visions of that third down yep. run earlier in the game, which really set the tone for Furman offensively. You, you think about what the arm strength provides. You think about what the wheels when they're needed provide. But more than that, the football IQ of the grad student at the quarterback position to know exactly when to do both has been critical. Roberto lunges forward there hasn't been as many holes as we saw in the first half it's been a lot of tough physical runs so far here in half number two but you get the sense with this lower scoring game than perhaps these two teams might have thought coming in or many expected favors a ball control team like Furman and has limited the explosiveness of this catamount offense well and the experience level I go back to you know how valuable you can't really quantify the value of a grad student QB. He also has a grad student that he's handing the football to in Roberto. This is where that Furman experience pays off so much. That pass a little tall, rare misfire from Luke Shiflett. Another grad student that he tried to throw it to that time and now a big third down. You know, for all the experience, they're now faced with a third down. This is one of the fewer of the third and longs we've had. Think of so many third and ones, third and twos, third and threes in the game that Furman is converted. Here's a third down and eight. Crowd at EJ Whitmire Stadium again climbs to their feet on third and eight. Trying to see their Catamounts come up with a big stop. It's front and center, right on that <laughs> Western Carolina logo. Play clock winding down. Snap taken by Huff. Drops back, fires. Got a man wide open. It's Shiflet who found an opening in the defense and marches across into Catamount territory down to the 30-yard line. Another third down conversion for the Paladins on offense. Yeah, Shifflett almost found his own zip code out in the flats, really able to work into some open space. And Huff calmly, collectedly able to deliver the football, and the drive stays alive for Furman, trying to extend what right now is a six-point lead. And a look from Kerwin Bell that, well, will tell you all you need to know about knowing how big of a moment that was, trying to get his offense back on the field. He doesn't leave you wondering what he's no. thinking that often. <laughs> One of the things you got to love about the coach of the Catamounts. And off up the middle, darting inside and for five more yards. And it's the difference than Roberto and some other backs. You feel like you bottled them up, you look up, and it's second and six. Well, and this is the, the time that if you're firm and you really want to place the football in his hands and let him begin to work that clock as you try and 
ultimately salt away a victory. Now, you want a lead of more than one possession first, which makes finishing this drive critical, but you can kind of glance ahead and know that you will be seeing a whole lot of Roberto should the Paladins be able to create a little separation on this drive. Well, and keep in mind, too, field goal kicking has been less than ideal for the Paladins so far. Roberto is going to get one, maybe two, just inside the 25-yard line and another big third down brewing. It seems like the later we go into this game, the bigger and bigger these third downs become. So can Huff make another play on third down? He's done it with his arm. He's done it with his legs. And with the field goal mystery, or special teams mystery, really, for Furman, are you thinking two downs and maybe give it to Roberto twice to pick up four? Remember, Shifflett wide open in the flat near side, the last third down. They'll hand it up the middle. And he gets popped right at the line to gain. He might be a half yard shy. Boy, Anderson provides such a burst out of the backfield, does he not, Kyle? No. But you said it, Western Carolina able to arrive just in time to make it fourth and short. And you got to think here, don't you, Jason, that the way things have gone, maybe a go. Well, it looks like maybe the kicking team comes out here. A botch snap or a botch hold last time. They're going to try it, and they're going back to their kicker. He missed the kick at the end of the half to Ian Williams. That one was 50. This one of 39 to give Furman a two-score lead. And timeout called. And for your reference point, he had made the field goal. Timeout. So perhaps a decision timeout. looming for Clay Hendricks. Ian Williams will try to break the tie. Emblematic of the special team's journey today has been for Furman. The one made field goal of the day. Furman took the timeout just prior out there to try to kick it again. So 39-yard attempt from Williams. He missed from 50. Last Furman field goal try, they botched the snap. Snap good here, kick is away, and it too is true. Paladins have their two score lead. So a big field goal to give Furman a two score lead as we welcome any just joining us across the country in a top 10 showcase between Furman and Western Carolina. It's lived up to the billing and well, I think, okay, maybe the Paladins have control here. They've controlled the time of possession here in the second half. It's a catamount offense that can score awfully quickly. 7.54, still a long way to go. Yeah, you get the sense a lot of twists and turns left in this one on both sides, that's for sure, with just under eight minutes to play. But let's not let it simply pass us by here, Kyle. A gutsy kick by yeah. Ian, Ian Williams. Ian Williams avoided the perhaps a self-iced scenario <laughs> after the timeout. He punched it back through a second time, and that's after some special teams woes throughout the day for Furman. So you credit that young man as a redshirt junior stepped up large to give Furman a little breathing room, at least for the moment. And let that man you see on your screen there perhaps breathe a little easier as Clay well. Hendricks. He, he said special teams are going to play a role in who wins this game. Perhaps Maybe their lone bright spot on special teams is in the kicking game. Perhaps the biggest so far. They made field goal to make it a two-score game. Cole Gonzalez and the Catamount offense back to work. You got a sense, even though nearly eight minutes to go, sense of urgency starts to ramp up a bit now. As he hands the ball, Adams reverses field. He's got some room out across the 30, picks up a first down. And a good, tough run from Adams. And it's a good thing when you see signs like that from Adams if you're Western Carolina, because remember, Catamount's forced to rely upon Adams. Desmond Reed carried the ball a couple of times. They were effective in the first half. He caught a pass of right at 40 yards, but departed after, has not returned since, and is in street clothes on the sideline. So it falls on the shoulders of Adams in the backfield for Western Carolina the rest of the way. Gonzalez. Fires and has his man across midfield. Lee has been in and out of the lineup, banked up a couple times. Here he makes a big catch across midfield. A timely location, timely reception, move the chains, and suddenly Western Carolina is into Furman territory. You alluded to the quick strike capability. It's on display. Travis Blackshear, the man in coverage there, and Gonzalez. Another good throw out wide, makes a man miss, at least momentarily, couldn't quite get away. 
But it is a first down. DeAndre Tamarez getting in on the axe. Two minute offense at the seven minute mark. In Western Carolina, when they need it for some type of reaction or response to get it back inside of one possession, in position to do that now. At least the three on the table for Western Carolina, perhaps a whole lot more as they try and chip away. Gonzalez again going to throw over the middle this time and has Lee again out across the 30. They'll give him forward progress out near the 27 and a Paladin down across the 35-yard line. One of those big guys up front. Because you think about it this way, Kyle, as you get one more look at kind of what happened there, and you certainly hope all is well with the lineman for Furman. But you see the training staff beginning to tend to See if we can get a number on exactly who that is for you that's down for the Paladins. So far, with the exception of Reed, who departed without any real sign of injury and did not return, everybody else, for the most part, has been able to continue. You certainly hope that's the case here. We'll step aside. Catamounts on a big drive with 6.20 to get the big defensive tackle match. Zofka, good to see him up on his own power. Hopefully he'll be able to get back in this one with 6.20 to go. A big second and seven as the Catamounts try to cash in. A lot of time left, but prime spot for Western Carolina. Remember, assuming you can hold Furman at some point, you need the touchdown and the field goal to win the football game here in the fourth quarter. Really of little consequence what order you get that in. And right there on the verge of field goal range now. So critical downs coming up. Gonzalez, play fake. Now under pressure, takes it himself. And he'll pick up a few. Nice job by Cole Gonzalez getting out of a sack and picking up a few yards. And it makes that so important right there, Kyle, the point we're just making, because you're moving forward, you're not moving backward. You keep the three on the table, noting, you, noting that you need both the three and the seven to win the football game. So heads up play by the young QB to make sure everything is on the table for Western Carolina. Western Carolina, five and nine on third down. Another big one here. This one third and five, trying to get that touchdown here if they can. Yeah, you always want to go for the big chunk, yeah, but you know you have to have both. Gonzalez, pressure coming, throws it away, and, well, we say he throws it away. It was nearly caught there on the boundary, but him getting rid of it prevented the sack. It would have been short of the first down anyway, and here comes Richard McCollum and the kicking unit. This is where it's proven out. The heads-up play a moment ago to get positive yards, and the play here to at least get rid of it and not lose yards keeping the three on the table and keeping Western Carolina to our point in position to make this a one possession game once again with just over five to play. Richard McCollum had the big moment one week or a couple weeks ago against Chattanooga. This one from 43. It's on the way, end over end, and it is right down the middle. No problem for McCullum. The Catamounts draw back within a score. Still a lot of time left with 5.13 to go, but a smooth operation with the fuel unit, perhaps even though they didn't pick up the first down, Cole Gonzalez helped set it up. Yeah, again, didn't lose yards in the early portion of that sequence and ended up getting rid of the football in a timely manner to make sure that the right-footed kicker from the right hash could punch it through. And just like that, back to a six-point game. We're now a touchdown and an extra point. Obviously, there may be a number of scores between here and there. <laughs> Who knows with 5.13 to play. But playing in the current game scenario, Western Carolina possession away from taking command. But perhaps what's not surprising, these two teams going down to the wire, it seems like they've made a habit of it of late. It was a six-point game a year ago. The Catamounts stymied on the five-yard line trying to score to win late in Greenville. Now it was Western Carolina by one last time the game was played here. So down to the point it's awful critical often in these matchups as the catamounts get set to kick this one away oh and by the way this time around the head of the class in the southern conference is on the line you're going to be the only unbeaten remaining in conference play if you're able to pick up the win here today so uh, the stakes high not to mention the fcs playoff implications of this may be the game you trace it back to in terms of of home ability and seating this uh, very important five minutes and 13 seconds remaining. End over end kick here, taken in the end zone. Furman's going to try to run it out. There's some room there. It's Anderson, and a flag comes flying. Uh, three, four flags come flying. It became laundry day on the far sideline, and we'll have to sort them out. I think there's multiple 
flags here perhaps to sort through. Now Anderson took a lick at the very end of this. We'll see if it's uh, in the upper body area as you get another glance at it near sideline and you think you know what's coming here with all the flags emerging just in front of that sideline group at once. One or two, it looked like the referee on the back end threw before the hit, wondering if maybe there was a block or a hold to be mindful. Maybe that push there, all sorts of things to try to sort through. And then on the play at the end, is he out of bounds is the first step. And then the targeting equation that comes into it as well. Targeting certainly review, but a lengthy conversation over there on the far side. Well, you saw the defender try to turn his shoulder at the very end of that, but there was still high body contact, which is always going to grab the attention of the men in stripes. During the return, hold it. Return team. Number 15. Personal foul. Targeting. Kicking team. Number 13. Penalty is offset. The foul for targeting is under further review. So as you said, Kyle, so many flags coming out at once, and there are multiple infractions. The one on the return for Furman and the more consequential that is now being reviewed of the targeting call against Western Carolina. So they will look for potential targeting. It's Darian Anderson, Jr., redshirt freshman. I was on the second end, or you look at the two deeps, if you will, the second or third or fourth corner defensively but this could be influential in next week as well if it is upheld he wouldn't be able to play the first half against Mercer right here in one week's time well and it's multifaceted in this moment yes. also because you're talking about the capability of having full personnel the rest of the way as well as the field position scenario that will shake out however these penalties ultimately go down so this as we've said so often today a flag that comes in a premier moment in the football game. Here's another look at how it all transpired. Well, there's another look. You see the turn at the end and all sorts of things to sort through and try to decipher. If they don't uphold targeting here, then the hold becomes a big play. That's the point. The field position yep. hanging in the balance here is what makes this review so critical. It goes Furman at the 32 to could be inside the 20, depending on the verdict here, and you saw pretty good arm from the umpire there as well, throwing the flag in. And Mike Moonlight is a baseball upfire this time of year. Yeah, there you the go. Season <laughs> upon us, he can certainly get it back to the mound quickly. So, yeah, he, referee said, "I'm done with that," and a big announcement here. After yep. review, there is no foul for targeting. The hold will be enforced ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Go back to the point, Kyle, that you saw Anderson turn his shoulder at the very last moment as we were talking about as the ball carrier went out of bounds. As a result, he gets to remain. And now that very important field position scenario changes as it's just the hold against the Paladins on the return that will be assessed despite all the flags. You Watch saw? him turn his corner, his, his shoulders right on the corner right at the end. I think that probably prevented this from being upheld on the review. That not a directly lunge for it as well, but now they got a spot in the football. This a game changer field position wise as it's going to come all the way back to the 21 yard line as opposed out across the 30 and in a six point game where a field goal could make it two scores again that could play a pivotal role as we come down the stretch with 505 to go. Offset pistol for Furman. Handoff comes, and across the 25, it's a pickup of five, six, maybe seven before it's all over. Another timely penalty is another storyline that has yeah. emerged for Furman in this game. You think about the touchdown that was called back on the holding call at the end of the half. They ended up getting nothing to the Paladins because the field goal try at the end was no good. Here you have what looks to be really solid field position, but once everything's reviewed and the penalties are assessed, it's against Furman, backs them up here. So some penalties along the way today, alongside the special teams issues that Furman looks at as well. Maybe things could be differently here in the fourth without those two aspects of the game. In good shape here though, it's second and short. They let the play clock wind down inside of five seconds. Another handoff, Roberto 
lunges forward, another first down, and the clock will wind some more as we'll go inside a four before the next snap. Roberto just found a tunnel to crawl through that time. <laughs> like the living room back in the old days, right? right? He found yep. just enough space low, and it shows you for all his size and all his ability to run over defenders, which we have seen at times today, he also is abil has the ability to understand the moment and uses his field vision to get low and pick up the first down for Furman. Now we With that first down, more precious seconds yep. roll off that game clock. Approach the three-and-a-half-minute mark before the first down snap. Handoff, Roberto seeks a couple, gets maybe three or four before a host of tackle, tackle orders bring him down. And we can wind this thing inside of three to go before second down. And you think about how huge that field goal was on yep. the last drive for Western Carolina because now you just need a stop and a touchdown to win the football game, pending the extra point, of course, if you're the Catamounts. And it's uh, starting to get down to crunch time here. You said it. This snap likely going to come with inside of three minutes remaining. Still 10 seconds on the play clock here. So the clock milks away. Home crowd wondering if it's running out on their Catamounts. Handoff up the middle, Roberto again close to the sticks, a yard shy. Yeah, looks like they're going to spot him about a yard short. You know, you, you see the sun, the late afternoon sun glistening off the helmets of these players as you glance down at the field here at E.J. Whitmire. It reminds you the spotlight nationally that's yeah. on this game, which elevates the importance of this third down. Third down and one. And if you're Western Carolina, if you're able to get a stop here, punting has also been an adventure for Furman. This not in any way the ball game. All three timeouts left for Western Carolina. But when you talk about preserving time, this is huge. And off Roberto. He's got another first down on the ground. Six straight runs to start the drive. They'll move the chains with one 57 to go. And Western Carolina will use timeout number one. Well, sometimes you run with your lineman. Sometimes you run right on your lineman. He did that there to secure the first down. So we will step aside. Big plays coming for, well, perhaps the biggest series of downs either one of these programs has had in a regular season game in a long, long time. A first down in Furman could likely run it out the rest of the way. Western Carolina has used one. Of their three timeouts, they have two remaining. Furman trying to get a first down and put the game on ice. Western Carolina trying to give their offense another crack as Roberto cracks through the line for a pickup of a couple. And the clock winds yet again. No timeout, at least yet, from Kerwin Bell. Still, as you said, Kyle has two in his back pocket. And this becomes the consequential series of the day. Look at it on the other side of things. Playing ahead here if you don't get the first down if you're Furman. Punting has been adventurous. And it's a Catamount offense that has had success in big moments late. First, the Catamount's defense has to try to get them there. Second down and seven. They'll milk it all the way down inside of five. Roberto the carry, flag is out, tackled for a loss, and now a decision to be made. Do you take third and nine, or do you make it second and 18 and add another down if you're Kerwin Bell, if indeed this is a hold? Downs in time, as critical as yardage right now. Wrapping around the back end, Chris Morgan, the nose tackle to make the stop. Looks like he's going to decline it just at first glance of some of the body language, as you would expect, because, again, downs in time as critical as yardage right now. But how fitting does it become to some degree, Kyle, that they have to stop Roberto, which was one of the key storylines yeah. coming into today, who had been so effective in this rivalry series over the last few years, comes down to keeping he and his teammates from moving the chains one more time for Western to have a chance. Here comes the call on the penalty. On what the penalty does too, it stops the clock with 105. Personal five, chop block, offense, 55 to 63. 
That penalty is declined. Third down. The clock will start on the snap. So it stops the clock for now. Would have been a 15-yard penalty. Down, or the time and down more consequential as you alluded to. And this essentially could be third and ball game. If the Paladins can pick it up, they will take a very happy bus ride down I-26 with this, a big win. But this is why the masses showed up in Western North Carolina today. They're being heard from with the game on the line. Third and nine. Huff will keep it, he's got an alleyway, and off he goes, and the Furman Paladins will climb to the top spot, perhaps, of the standings. He does score. Flags are out on the back end. Jubilation on the Paladins' sideline. The tone was set for today on a Huff first down run on a third down scamper. Will it be his scamper that seals it for Furman? really going to come down to the ultimate outcome of the penalty, but you got to love the call for the Paladins as Huff calls his own number when it matters most. But this is uh, hanging in the balance right now as well as we await word. Well, because if it's a hold or block in the back, if it's a first down. After the play, on sportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 63, 93. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Point for try. Interesting part here too, Jason. Huff could have gone down after picking up a first down and Furman could have milked this one away. Now, by scoring, it is a two score game. And those that have made the trip up I-26, sensing the top spot in the league, there's a chance here, there's a narrow crease if you're Western Carolina with 54 seconds to go. Timeout, Furman. That is the last timeout of the half. Furman's going to call timeout here on the point after try. And If you're Furman here, you're up 12. You might as well go for two, try to make it a full 14. Furman going to talk about all their options and, yeah. and now in a protection mode, feeling like they're on the verge of the victory of the year in the Southern Conference. And I'll go back to it one more time, Kyle, but what can you say about the experience you have yeah. at the quarterback position at Tyler Huff, if you're Furman, that the consequential moment in many ways of the first half that set the tone for the game is when he tucked it on third down, converted after Western had failed to score early. And then when it matters most at the end of the game, his number called once more, and it is the experienced quarterback of the Paladins who puts the game, at least for now it would seem, on ice with the touchdown run. Again, 54 seconds remaining. Stranger things have happened, but Furman's certainly in control of the football now in ways that neither team has been to this point. So Furman, it does look like they will go for two, trying to make it a 14-point game. So they'll put this one on the left hash. The other side of that is if you get a pick six or something of that nature, it's two points the other way. So all sorts of scenarios at play here. Furman trying to take a commanding two-score lead. Roberto stymied there. So two-point try fails. Furman 0 for 2 on two-point attempts. 54 seconds. Two touchdowns required for Western Carolina. With two timeouts, you know you're going to have to get an onside kick or something of that nature in there as well. Honey, think about how much Roberto factored in. He carries the ball on this two-point conversion, but as effective as he's been not only all day, but all career in the head-to-head -head meetings between these teams, you have to key on him in many ways, and it allowed Huff to go a bit unnoticed in some key moments in this contest. And again, just a gutsy call, works out, pays dividends, and Furman finding themselves in a 29-17 advantageous position with just under a minute to play. You go back to, to that opening series. Furman didn't have much going on their first two plays offensively. It was third and about eight. And Huff with a stiff arm, under pressure, got out of it, picked up a first down with his legs, resulted in a scoring drive for the Paladins. Really kind of bookends the day yep. for the grad student quarterback, Huff, and, uh, and for the Paladins if this score holds across the final 54. So Paladins will boot this one out of the end zone 
An well, unsportsmanlike call from Western Carolina on that touchdown play, which really you look at it, penalty now becomes of no consequence. They'll start at the 25. Cole Gonzalez and company, they need points. They need them in a hurry. 54 seconds to work with. A familiar time stamp if you go back to the Chattanooga game two weeks ago, but now they need two scores, not just the one. Yeah, everything would have to fall your way at this point. And again, mathematically, there's some ways to get it done. You can score quickly, get the football back, and do so again. But the hill much larger that the Catamounts need to climb at this point. You look at Furman, Kyle, and it's ETSU in Greenville next week at yep. Chattanooga on November 4th. VMI at home in Greenville on the 11th, and then they travel to their in Palmetto State rival Wofford on the 18th. That's what's out in front of this group is as they look at today as perhaps one of the key springboards toward a Southern Conference championship opportunity. But uh, again, Western Carolina, the football in their hands and an opportunity at least with 54 seconds to play. Though Furman now has a commanding lead. And the big one you circle there, November 4th. You got it. At Chattanooga. Gonzalez fires over the middle. He's got his man across the 40. Clock will stop momentarily. It's Colombo, and that looks a lot like the drive. Western Carolina used to start. It was Colombo over the middle against Chat. It's him again here. The other thing about the touchdown run, it preserved the Western Carolina timeouts. Right. Two, two still remaining. Gonzalez. Fires, Miss White this time. It's been a popular connection throughout. We'll bring up second and 10, 38 seconds remaining. And if this ultimately becomes the, the outcome for Western Carolina, you also have to look a, a little bit further into the future and understand that both these teams, top 10 programs, yep. got to be very much in the thick of things, regardless of what happens in the Southern Conference Championship race, very much in the thick of things when you talk FCS playoffs. So uh, these are critical moments to the bigger goal for both these teams as well, regardless of what happens here in the closing moments. Gonzalez fires under the underneath, has his man. Adams will scamper for the first down and get out of bounds. 31 seconds to go. I think you have to love what it says about the Southern Conference, right? Oh, at absolutely. times there have been four yeah. or five teams in national polls this year and that the Southern Conference on this Saturday afternoon in October has had all eyes on it because two top ten teams are battling it out in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Major strides for the conference, and if this holds a, a big win for Furman, yes, if Western Carolina can't come from behind in impressive fashion here at the end, but a big day for the conference all around. Gonzalez in the pocket. Now he's got to move. Gonzalez sacked in the field of play. Timeout Western Carolina with 22 seconds remaining. Timeout Western Carolina. 30 second timeout. But we mentioned looking ahead that November 4th game certainly circled going to Chattanooga for Furman. Now almost with the defeat here, it was going to be big anyway. The game against Mercer next week here for Western Carolina, also a critical contest. And who knows the way Mercer's been playing. They could be knocking on the door of a coach's pole berth as well. Then on November 4th, Catamounts travel to Wofford. They welcome in ETSU in the home finale at 1 p.m. on the 11th and then finish up in Lexington, Virginia on the road at VMI. So that's what's on the table for the Catamounts. And again, you knew one of these teams was going to come out on the short end today. Still with so many playoff yeah. aspirations there for the taking. That's going to be the case, whatever the ultimate outcome. But uh, this certainly circled as the game in the Southern Conference and one of the two premier games in all of FCS on this day. And it's lived up to the billing. I mean, here we are heading down to the final snaps with 22 seconds to play and a lot of folks still hanging around. The lead 12 for Furman, Western Carolina. Needs points. They need him in a hurry. Gonzalez under a heavy rush here. And did he pick it off? Yes, he did. And that will put a bow on it for Furman. That should seal it. Hugh Ryan, the free safety. And the second interception for Cole Gonzalez today will be the one that ends it as they carry Ryan off the field. It will be a celebratory ride home for the Paladins. You, Ryan, out of Dutch Fork, South Carolina, the power in South Carolina out of Irmo, played for the Silver Foxes, a part of all those championship environments that they've won at the 5A ranks, a top level in football in South Carolina, and he's trying to push his team a little closer to a Southern Conference championship. How about the run by six, and then wearing the defensive six, the pick 
by number six to, to try and seal it for the Furman Paladins. It's just a, an all-around day in which Furman overcame some special teams issues, some penalty issues, and did enough with this experienced group to take a knee. So Furman will take the knee. Time will expire. And Furman in the driver's seat for a Southern Conference championship. Clay Hendricks told us their team goals every year. SoCon championship toward the top of the list. They certainly in a good position to do that now with a big one looming in a couple weeks time. Certainly you mentioned living up to the billing as the two coaches exchange pleasantries. A lot of people coming in, okay, how good really is Western Carolina and Furman? Found out emphatic yes to both counts.